Hello there, and welcome to this video. This video was made to help you relax, maybe even prepare for sleep, or bring yourself down to a calmer state of mind. You will find some soft speaking, some background noise in an art gallery, some sounds of nature, and some white noise at the very end. I recommend you watch with headphones and an open mind, as I am fairly new to this. These clips are all from a recent trip to Ontario and Quebec in Canada. I will be talking about some history and some art, and you may or may not learn something. But most of all, I hope you feel calm and safe. In a moment, the music will fade away, and we will begin the video. Thank you for watching, and let's begin. We begin in the National Gallery of Canada, which is located in our capital city called Ottawa. Upon entering, you'll notice some of the beautiful architecture, which was designed by Moshe Safdie in 1985 and finished in 1988. This gallery is over 46,000 square meters with 12,400 square meters being used for art. They definitely had interesting approaches and engaging pieces that made you look in all directions. It was a very unique experience. I began on the first floor in the section that featured indigenous and Canadian traditional and contemporary artwork. This exhibit features artwork from many different indigenous artists from different nations across the land. This iconic piece was created by Norvell Marceau, who is considered by many to be the grandfather of contemporary indigenous art in Canada. He is best known for using bright colors and portraying traditional stories, spiritual themes, and political messages in his work. We then move on to a piece titled Histories Between and Through Time by Jordan Bennett. There's a lot of context behind this piece, and one thing mentioned in the write-up is that Jordan used bright colors in reference to the patterns found in historical Micmac quilt work. This piece was created by Mark Arule Fortin from 1923 to 1930. The write-up beside it states, this canvas is completed in full chromatic color with modulating rays, which is characteristic of this period in his production. Now I admit, I don't entirely know what that means, but I do enjoy the tiny brush strokes and little details of this piece. 
Now this painting actually caught my eye from across the room. And I think that's because of the way the color and the light is right in the center. This was created by J. E. H. MacDonald in 1916. And at first, he was actually critiqued for using such a large canvas for what they considered a very mundane subject. According to the write-up, one critic even compared the painting to a huge tomato salad. However, I really appreciated this work. The colors intrigued me, and the flowers facing down told the story, in my opinion. I don't have much to say about this piece, besides that it was also created by J. E. H. MacDonald a few years later in 1921. Moving forward, we have this piece titled Snow Clouds by Franklin Carmichael from 1938. The National Gallery of Canada has a wide variety of styles displayed, such as this piece, once again by Mark Roy Fortin, made in the 1920s. However, we also have this piece, created by Bertram Brooker from the same time period. However, it's a vastly different style, and if you told me this came out today, I would believe you. Moving forward in time, we have this piece by John Paul Riopelle from 1954. Immediately, I was intrigued by how everything seemed intentional, but was also, it had this messy element to it. This piece must have taken a lot of work as each stroke of paint was applied by hand with a palette knife. Next up, we have a body of work I will surprise you as you turn the corner and you see the full size. It stands from floor to ceiling and was created by artist Ibrahim Mahama. He acquired these scrap materials in his home country of Ghana through a process of trade and negotiation with other Ghanaians that migrated to city centers in search of work. Specifically, work related to shoe shining and shoe repairs. We then have Vertigo C by John Acomfra. Vertigo C fuses original narrative footage with literary references and documentary material from the archives of the BBC Studios Natural History Unit. Akomfra's video meditates on our complex relationship with the sea. I will leave you now for a few moments to enjoy this mesmerizing art piece.
enjoy the outdoors of Quebec. In this part of the video, I will try and speak a little quieter. This peaceful spot is on a tiny lake in a rural area of Quebec. I was there to celebrate a joyous event between some friends. However, I was able to sneak away for a few minutes and enjoy a moment of solitude. Something I've noticed about Quebec is that there are crickets and little frogs everywhere. This is the part of the video where it gets darker and darker on screen and I try to get quieter and quieter because I hope that you feel calm or relaxed at this point and maybe you're getting ready This video is almost done. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. In a moment, I will go and I will leave you with the soft sound of white noise. <laughs>